Hi, welcome back! On this episode of Becoming Felicity, we're going to be making a cap because contrary to the belief of many, many a TV and film costumer, ladies did in fact wear caps, and so did children. And babies. Caps are a thing. So for this project, I'm going to make the most basic cap that I know how to make, specifically because as much as I would like to recreate this lacy confection that American Girl created for Felicity's summer dress, I have no evidence that it's something she would have actually worn. Um, and if I do make this basic cap, I have every opportunity to add lace to it later rather than making a full call and band out of lace, which I'm pretty sure did exist and there are some bits of evidence of it. It's just I don't know that Felicity would have had it. So because I have to make this cap anyway, and it's a pretty simple project, I thought you might like to come along with me and learn how I do it. So let's get into it. The first step is to hem the band that goes over the head. In order to prevent the curved edge from stretching as I sew, I'm first basting 1 8 of an inch along this side. Once that's basted, I'm folding it over again and stitching a tiny 1 16 of an inch all along the same side. For the straight edge of the band, I can use a rolled hem. I do this by literally rolling the fabric between my fingers until the raw edge is turned under and I have a nice tight hem to stitch. I am by no means an expert at this, but there are those who are, so I'll try to link their videos or blogs down below. With the band finished, I just need to hem the front edge of the ruffle. The edge that connects the ruffle to the cap will be finished and gathered in the same step, but later. Because you just watched me hem the band, we're skipping this bit. Unfortunately for all of us, the process where I hemmed the call and inserted the eyelet and pulled the tape through has been completely lost. The good news is that there are other resources out there for this information and I will link them down below. I apologize. With the three main pieces mostly finished, it's time to tackle gathering the call to the band. The first thing I like to do is preemptively hem up a small area on both sides of the call. With that finished, I need to gather the rest of it. To accomplish this, I'm doing something called whipped gathers. Starting at the point on the side of the call that I hemmed before, I'm basically looping the fabric continuously around my needle, which makes the edge curl under and protect the raw bits, but also creates a very springy, easy to adjust gathered edge. I'm not going to knot off my thread here because once I've got this finished, I need to adjust the gathers and then fit the straight edge to the band, so I need a little bit of wiggle room. 
and therefore leave the thread quite long. I cannot recall who called this the divide and conquer method, but if you do, please let me know in the comments. Essentially, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm dividing the call and the band into halves and matching that point right sides together. After that, I'm going to match the endpoints of the band to the call, starting from the bottom drawstring casing and pinning up through that hemmed area, stopping where the gathers begin. Next, I'm finding the center point between the edge of the hem and the top of the call. This would have been a lot easier before I gathered it, but this will do. Now that I've got a very funny looking oyster shape, I can pull my gathering threads and evenly space the gathers along the edge of the band. Before I start stitching the gathers down, I like to attach the hemmed edge of the call to the band. This is done by taking very tiny whip stitches while butting the two hemmed edges together. Time for stitching down the gathers. This is done in the same manner as attaching the two hemmed edges as before, but this time I'm going to catch each individual whipped gather with my stitch. If for some reason your gathers aren't super tight together, you might want to put a stitch or two in between them as well. This is really a judgment call. With the gathers attached to the band, all that remains is doing the exact same thing but with the ruffle and on the other side of the band. In one of the picture I showed you earlier, instead of a ruffle, the girl has a bit of lace attached to the edge here, so you could definitely do that as well. I kind of wish I had, but I didn't. You don't need to watch me do whipped gathers again for the whole ruffle, but that's exactly what happened. As before, I've divided the gathered edge along the band. It's looking extremely attractive at this point, no? Just like with the call, I need to pull the gathering thread and adjust the ruffle along the band until it looks adequate. To affix the ruffle, I like to secure my thread to the point of said ruffle before I commence with tightly whip stitching it to the band. So, the cap is all done. This is quite small, it's for a small child, uh, but you could obviously make a bigger one or anything else with the same techniques that I talked about making this. It's all the same, lots of rolled hems, lots of tiny hems, lots of whip stitches, whip gathers, and you can make just about any cap that you like. For this, I'm going to add a bit of lace along the edge here to sort of bring out more of the lacy American Girl cap. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that my instructions were at least moderately clear. If they weren't, please send me a message and I will attempt to rectify that situation. Um, but otherwise, I will see you again soon. Just got distracted because Facebook happens to be open and people are messaging me about historical clothing. What a shock. It's a cap.